Good morning everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope we're all very well, happy and dandy this uh, this Saturday morning. It's raining cats and dogs here in the UK, but there you go, what's new? So, what better time than now to pull down the ZX Spectrum next, do a few more upgrades and see how we get along. So what we're doing here is pulling the case off. We've done this many times before, it's not that exciting, it's quite easy to do. I'm using a Bosch power drive today, uh, just to save a little bit of time. See how fast I am? I'm really fast. Okay, so carefully unplug in the motherboard of the TB Blue, and here we go. So as you can see, we have a Wi-Fi module fitted, ready to go. No, we don't. I'm telling lies. Now we have a Wi-Fi module fitted, ready to go, and there it is. We're going to be popping this into the TB Blue motherboard and making sure it's in the correct orientation. Quite important. I can't get it wrong here because the Raspberry Pi is in the way. So it only goes one way, pointing towards the SD card. Nice and simple, nice and easy. Can't really get that wrong. Next up, something you can get wrong, is fitting the real-time clock. Now, one of the most important things on this is fitting the crystal, which is a bit of a pain, but I'll come to that in a moment. So step one, we're going to be fitting the socket for the uh, real-time clock, and this is the calendar and clock module. So we're going to solder one pin, I've got one finger holding it underneath um, underneath the motherboard as you can see I'm pressing it into the board so as I solder pin 1 hopefully it should stay nice and flat and level it is so I'm going to continue what you could do here is use some masking tape or some electricians uh, uh, electrical tape which would do do the job equally as well I'm not sure sticky sellotape would but perhaps it would so we're going to solder these eight pins it's nice and easy to do uh, there's good space in between the solder pads, so there's no excuse really for making a mess of it. A little bit of solder splash there. Um, just make sure you haven't bridged any of the pins. Get the soldering iron nice and warm. Don't stay on there too long. And um, it should be all good, nice and easy. And there we go. So that is the socket and chip fitted. You've got make sure you've got the correct orientation. It's quite easy to get things the wrong way around, so it's notch to notch. You put the notch on the socket pointing the same way as the notch on the motherboard, and then you put the chip into the socket with a notch pointing the same way. Now we have the crystal, and the crystal's a little bit of a pain in the bum. Not that it's particularly difficult to fit, there's no orientation, it's two pin or two leads, so you put those through. I, I laid mine down as I like to see crystals laid down. Um, I bend the lead wires over slightly so I can solder them. Now the problem is that the solder pads are very very close together so it's important to be careful here and not to bridge the two pads together. Now what I tend to do is put my reading glasses on so I can see what the hell I'm doing, which as I get older is more difficult. Uh, I have a nice fine tip on the soldering iron, nice and warm, a quick blob and it's done. The only thing left to do is to cut the leads off. Oops. So now we have the real time clock and I'm going to put the battery holder in place first. Pop it into the motherboard. Again the legend is on the PCB so you can see which way it goes, it's a little bit of a diagram. So the back of the battery is where the SD card really goes. It's two pins, it is nice and simple, it sticks down so you can lay it on your table and it should protrude nicely and keep flat with the motherboard. That's it, that is the battery holder soldered in place. Just check that it's nice and flat, it should be. The most difficult bit will be um, getting the battery out of the holder, out of the uh, packet, I suspect, to pop into the holder. Those vacuum seal batteries are a pain in the neck. It's like when you go shopping, you can't open your food packets. But anyway, so let's have a quick look. We'll cut the leads off. Nice sharp scissors, or use uh, some snips, ideally snips rather than scissors, but I scissor scissors at hand, so I use those. 
again just check that everything's okay there's no bridges on the solder and we should be good to go everything looks all right so there we go that is the battery setup finished tend to do is usually pop it in the wrong side so what you should do is slide it in at an angle and it will just pop into place and there we go that is the real time clock fitted so next up we have the PC speaker now this is just a standard PC motherboard speaker that I bought one of the cheap things from eBay from China they're two or three pounds each this is the sort of thing you have for if you're a PC builder you have boxes of these things kicking about. I never used to bother with them on motherboards but anyway. So I'm going to solder a header onto the motherboard. It's a header that I had in my parts drawer. It's a bog standard. I think it was actually a five pin header and I uh, chopped one of the pins off to make it into a four pin header. So we're just going to solder that into place nice and gently. Make sure that there's no bridges and the solder is nice and neat. Keep your solder nice and warm. Bit of flux on there so there's no dry solder joints or horribleness. But everything should be okay. I think when you buy these kits off eBay, you can buy uh, you can buy them and they have the little speaker and they come with a pin header of some kind. Now the first mistake I made here, which I didn't realize at the time, was when you solder the header on, don't have it sticking up at 90 degrees, because what that means is that when it's pointing up like that, it won't fit in the case, which I didn't realize this at the time. I do have another speaker actually from the um, original ZX Spectrum from the Harlequin. Um, I think it's a 32 hum speaker, so I might look at popping that in place and see see what that sounds like. I suspect this speaker will be a little bit quiet, but I don't know. So there we go. So that's the Wi-Fi in place. We have the clock. We have the Raspberry Pi, and now we have a speaker in place. So the only upgrade left to do, as far as I'm concerned, is a RAM upgrade, which I shall be doing next when my RAM arrives, which I've ordered from Retrobench. Hopefully, it will only be a day or two. Uh, but anyway, so as you can see, I've actually lent or bent the pin header over at 90 degrees from being upright so that it is level with the board, as you can see here, which means that the speaker is now flat, or the pin header is now flat to the motherboard. The reason for that is, as I suspected, it does foul on the case when you try to put it back together. So if you're, if you're fitting a uh, speaker, make sure you get right angled pin headers to solder to the motherboard uh, because it simply won't fit if you stick them up right. Okay, everything's done, everything's back together. We're going to uh, quickly, so I'll be doing a stream shortly on probably Saturday morning in the UK, perhaps in an hour's time or so. So if you're there, I shall see you there. If not, I'll see you in the next video where we do part three, which will probably be the final upgrade and that will be the RAM upgrade. So, thank you very much for watching, have a pleasant weekend, and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye for now.
computer talk. It is fed punched cards containing the names of speech sounds. The computer combines these sounds in accordance with the linguistic rules which govern the English language. Thank you.